Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I just bought one of the cheapest Windows laptops you'll find at retail. This is the HP Laptop 14. I paid $180 for this at Walmart. They had it up on the shelf there. And what we're going to do in this video is take a look and see what a very low-cost Windows laptop gets you. And you'll be surprised, perhaps, by how upgradable this one is versus the more expensive laptops you might run into. Now, before we dive into this review, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, with any low-cost laptop like this, there will be some trade-offs, but there are some good things which we'll start with here. So this has an Intel N150 processor inside. This is the same Intel chip that we look at on a lot of inexpensive mini PCs. It is quad core, it is very capable. It's not going to rival a $1,000 laptop or even an $800 laptop, but the lowest end Intel chip, which is what this one is basically running, has gotten so much better over the last couple of years that you can do a lot with them. And they're also very power efficient. Unfortunately though, this comes with only four gigabytes of RAM, but that's where the upgrading comes in. So I popped the bottom cover off here. It's very easy to get to, there's just four screws. And when you open it up, you've got your RAM stick there facing you. It's DDR4 RAM. You can get that RAM pretty much anywhere, pretty inexpensively. So it's easily upgradable. And a little bit earlier, what I did is I popped in a 16 gigabyte RAM module that I had laying around here. They're not all that expensive. And then I also was able to pop in an NVMe SSD. And that's because there is an NVMe slot inside of here that is not occupied. So you can make this a little better, uh, even though it doesn't start off on a good foot and you're still in a pretty good price range here as well. I don't think opening this up violates the warranty on this, so you should be able to make an upgrade, get it into a more capable state, but still have the HP support to go with it. And speaking of support, it does have a one-year warranty from HP with domestic support here in the US and likely your home country too. So it's a little better on the support side than what you might get from a cheap Chinese laptop that might have slightly better specifications. Now, as far as storage goes on this, you saw that NVMe slot. We did occupy that slot with a one terabyte SSD, but it has a 128 gigabyte UFS flash storage device built in. So that's going to be slower than an SSD would, but it's not bad here. I'm pulling about 800 megabytes per second on the writes, and that's on the slower built-in storage. And then on the reads, I'm getting about the same. Now, if we switch over to that NVMe drive that I have installed on here, which is now my D drive, uh, we will see better performance here, uh, but not much, about a gigabyte per second or so, 1.2 gigabytes there on the right. This is a Samsung drive that we put in and about the same on reads. So either way, I was surprised by uh, how good the storage performance was on such an inexpensive device. And one of the fun things about having two storage options on here is that you could dual boot this. So you could have Windows on one of the drives and Linux on the other. And Linux does run pretty well on these chips and we'll explore how well it runs on this particular laptop as we get our way further into the review here. What's not so great on this is the fact that the display is the sacrifice. And this has only a 720p display, 1366 by 768. It's only 250 nits of brightness and it's a TN display. It doesn't have very good color for doing professional work. So this is not a video editing machine. It's not a photo editing machine either, just given the quality of the display, but it's decent enough for basic transportation. That was the one thing I was hoping would be a little better on this would be the display, but unfortunately it is not. And that's where some of those cheaper Chinese laptops will do better. Many of them come with a 1080p IPS display, for example, that looks better and runs at a higher resolution. This one is about as cheap as you can get as far as displays are concerned. Now the webcam isn't much better. It is a 720p webcam, basic transportation here, good enough for doing a Zoom call or something, but not something that is going to be great for starting your Twitch channel. But it does have a shutter mechanism built in, so you don't have to put tape over your camera lens. That little shutter will cover it up physically. I was impressed with the network connectivity on this. It does have a Wi-Fi 6 radio from Realtek built in. And we'll run a quick speed test here over my 
a multi gigabit fiber optic connection and as you'll see it actually does pretty well for a cheap laptop we're getting about three or four hundred megabits per second on the downstream this is certainly more than adequate for doing uh, Netflix and YouTube and other types of streaming services. Again, you'll find laptops that can do better, but this is fine for what it is. And the upstream here, even though the little meter isn't going like it's supposed to, is delivering a uh, very similar performance here, about 300 megabits per second. So again, not blazingly fast, but nice and consistent. And we'll take a look at some streaming examples and some game streaming a little bit later in the video. Now, as far as the build quality is concerned, this is all plastic. But it's not bad for plastic. I was actually surprised it felt as good as it did. The weight on this is about three pounds or around 1.4 kilograms or so, so not all that heavy. It doesn't flex all that much when you push down hard on it. Again, it could be worse than uh, what you would expect from something like this. The lid, though, is not very well balanced, so when you do close the lid, it will take a hand or two hands to open it back up again, but that's a minor complaint. The keyboard and trackpad are also adequate. The keyboard is a little springier than I would like, but it's got decent key travel to it. It is not backlit, but what do you expect for the price point here? The keys are well spaced, but again, a bit on the springy side. There are no biometrics on this, so you don't have the face ID or the fingerprint reader. So you will have to type in your pin code every time you want to log in. The trackpad feels a bit spongy, so we got a springy keyboard and a spongy trackpad, but again, it works fairly well and tracks better than I would expect it to. Now, as far as ports are concerned, there are not many here. So on the left-hand side, we have a full-size USB-A port. This is five gigabit per second USB. You have an HDMI output here. This will support a 4K display, but don't expect much out of it on the gaming front, which we'll explore in a little bit. You also have a USB Type-C port here, but this is data only. It doesn't do power and it does not do video output. So it is strictly five gigabit per second data out of this USB-C port. You do though get a headphone jack over there. And then on the other side, you have another full-size USB-A port and then your barrel connector for the included power supply goes in there. And the power supply is not all that large here, fairly compact and it runs at about 45 watts here. So all in a pretty decent little package here. This is not fanless. The fan will kick on from time to time. It can be a little noisy, but it's not going to sound like a wind tunnel. Generally, when you're just sitting idle on a web page or just doing some basic work like word processing, you won't hear that fan at all. I am not hearing it at the moment. The battery life on this is going to be better than you might expect. So I would say you'll probably get about five or six hours out of it if you keep the brightness down and stick to basic tasks. These Intel chips are very efficient, so if you are not taxing them too hard, they don't consume all that much power. If you try to play games on it or do a little bit more than the basics, that will eat into the battery life quite significantly. But overall, you should be able to get through the better part of a workday on this. Why don't we take a look now and see how it performs. This is running with Windows 11, and its default is to run in Windows 11 S mode. What S mode means is that it won't allow you to install software that did not come from the Windows Store. You can override that by leaving S mode, but when you leave S mode, you can't go back into it later. So it is a little more secure if you leave S mode on, but again, it limits what you can install on the unit here. I did leave S mode to install different software that we'll be testing in this review, and that's up to you as to whether or not you want to do that. But if you try to install something on this, you will need to leave S mode first if you're not installing it from the Windows Store. So this is the performance. You saw how fast this web page came up. This is the NASA.gov homepage, and we are browsing, of course, over Wi-Fi, and it's certainly adequate here. It works quite well. Uh, for browsing the web, so I wouldn't expect any issues here beyond the display not looking spectacular. Um, but beyond that, it seems to be performing on par with some of the mini PCs we've looked at that are running with similar hardware. And this is YouTube running with a 1080p 60 frames per second video. It is not dropping any frames. It's able to keep up with it just fine. This is what I would expect out of one of these Intel N150 processors. Now, earlier, when I only had four gigabytes of RAM, I did the same test and it was dropping frames all over the place. So the RAM it comes with is barely adequate to do anything on Windows these days. It will work, but you're going to have 
more sluggish performance, and that will also translate to more sluggish video playback performance, especially when you have high frame rate video like this. These computers need at least eight gigabytes of RAM, in my opinion, so that's why I would strongly suggest if you're buying this, buy a stick of RAM to go with it. And because we put that extra RAM in here, as you can see, the video playback performance on YouTube is doing just fine. Now, a little bit earlier, I ran the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, which is a web application benchmark. And there I got a score of 10.1, even with only four gigabytes of RAM. I ran this before I upgraded the system. I got a similar score when I ran it again with 16 gigabytes, but that's because I only had one tab open when I ran the test. So I think if you stacked up a bunch of tabs, you would see a performance decline as it does have to swap things in and out of memory when you only have four gigabytes on board. But this does perform on par with other N150 based mini PCs we've looked at earlier. Now the system runs Microsoft Office applications like Word here just fine. We'll load up my little test document here I like to play around with. And as you can see, it flows text here very quickly, very much on par with other mini PCs I've looked at. I did run this same test earlier when it had four gigabytes of RAM installed and the performance was about the same, but if I had anything else open, it was running a little more sluggish. So with more RAM, you can do more at the same time without a performance penalty, but all in, it seems to be a good basic work machine. All right, let's take a look now at some games running on this device. Now remember, we've got 16 gigabytes on the laptop now. With four gigabytes, you're not gonna run much of anything beyond some really old stuff or perhaps some eight and 16 bit console games and emulation. But with the memory, you can actually run some more recent games. So right now I am running GTA 5, Grand Theft Auto 5. We are at 720p at the lowest settings and we're getting a pretty consistent 30 frames per second, sometimes a little bit more than 30 frames per second. And this performance level is something that we see with many PCs running with the same hardware here. So this is performing very close to where I would expect it to perform, but you need the memory. This game won't load at all with four gigs of RAM, but you put eight or 16 in and you'll get, believe it or not, a pretty playable experience with a relatively recent game. And that just gives you an idea as to how far this Intel hardware at the low end has come in just a few short years. All right, let's take a look now at some game emulation. I've got a PS2 emulator running right now on the laptop. And remember, we're at 16 gigs of RAM here, and we are pretty much getting a full speed PS2 experience here running Burnout Revenge. It is occasionally dipping below 60 frames per second, like right about here. Uh, but generally it's able to run a good chunk of the PS2 library here at a decent frame rate. I would say the PS2 and the GameCube is about the max that you can squeeze out of this device here, uh, but that does mean you can play a lot of games if you've got enough RAM on board to support it. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, I got a score of 466. That is right on par with what we've seen out of other Intel N150 mini PCs, again, with the same chip inside. This test though would not run when I had four gigs of RAM installed on the system, which is why upgrading the memory will be so important. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 93.4%. You can see what temperature the system was at when it was running under heavy load. So you will see probably a seven or 8% performance decrease when you've got this system fully loaded for a long period of time, but for the price it is not too bad. Let's take a look at game streaming now. All right, so here we are streaming a game from GeForce Now. So this game, No Man's Sky, is not running locally on this computer, but rather streaming from NVIDIA's servers via their game streaming service here. And it seems to be working just fine. The color of this planet is blue, which is why the color looks off here. So this is as expected, but we're getting very consistent performance here. My latency is running at about 13 milliseconds, so maybe a little bit higher than what I see on an Ethernet-based mini PC with similar hardware, but by and large here, the game streaming experience, provided you've got a good Wi-Fi signal, I think is going to be pretty good with this hardware here. So good way to get some AAA titles running on your system. And of course, there are game streaming services from NVIDIA like we're testing here, but also Microsoft and a few others as well. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is Linux running on this machine. We talked about the potential for dual booting. So I've done just that. We've got Ubuntu 25.04 running here, and it seems to be running quite nicely so far. 
Now you could find yourself a low impact Linux distribution that can run nicely in four gigs of RAM. There's a bunch of options out there for that. So I think you might actually get with four gigs better Linux performance than you would with Windows. But if you got a lot of RAM, your options of course are even more numerous here. And one of the things that I do here in the house is actually run a home server on this very same N150 chip that is powering this laptop. So Linux is a very good choice for this hardware, especially with four gigs of RAM. And so far the experience running Linux here has been very, very good as it is on other N150 devices we have looked at lately here. So all in, I think a very good value, especially because this is a name brand with domestic support and a year warranty. If you've been a little skittish about buying a cheap laptop from a company you haven't heard of before, this one is a HP laptop, even though it's not the best one they make, it's actually better than you might think. My only gripe here beyond the four gigs of RAM is the display. It is low resolution. It doesn't look all that great, but from a performance standpoint, it actually does quite well for where it sits in the marketplace. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.